A pleasure to me all at last. And today is May 2nd, 2024. I'm basically going to continue from where we left off with Nerf Secret Reveal, Tears of the Clown, Rebel, Tier List. So, what we're going to do here is utilize another 16 blasters from the line because there's a lot of them. And I mean a lot. So, picking up from where we left off with the Epic Action Bow, we're going to move on to the flip side. Yes, this is basically a compound bow with two six dart cylinders. And I know what you're thinking. It's little more than a zombie strike flip fury made for the rebel line. Well, I mean, to some extent, that's not untrue. I mean, this is the same type of overall design in terms of the cylinders being adjacent to each other, fixated by two rods that hold them together and are able to pivot 360 through the usage of a certain trigger button. In the same regard that the Flip Fury had its own trigger button, which specifically was made for flipping the barrels 180 degrees, thus allowing for them to easily lock into place, and it was quite satisfying. But in this case though, I don't quite see the flip side being that much better. I would practically consider the Flip Fury an A or even S rank blaster if I'm feeling generous, but as my current mood would say, while the flip side itself operates in the same way and arguably does even better in terms of its overall performance as I've checked overall. And unfortunately we'll have to settle for only an A ranking only because I feel that it has the same potential as the Flip Fury but it probably cannot do any better than that of the Flip Fury contrary to its design cubes. Next we're going to move on to the Luminati which is its own prime handle style blaster, three barrels, and even has its own hand guard. A hand guard that goes from the grip to the underside of the blaster's barrels. So, not much more to offer, but it still is satisfying nonetheless. B ranking for this one. Next up we have ourselves the Sweet Destiny. Yeah, Sweet Destiny. I don't know what they could possibly do to come up with this piece, but once again, it's little more than a hammer shot. But I feel like that it does have plenty to offer, in spite of it just being a ripoff. So, A ranking with this one too. I feel like I'm being a bit too generous on all fronts. So now we'll go to the tribute bow. This bow actually uses arrows. In a similar sense that the Zombie Strike series in 2017 utilized arrows with the likes of the Dreadbolt and Wrathbolt. In this similar regard with this type of compound bow from the Rebel line, this is exactly what goes down. It uses its own series of arrows. And there were a few other blasters from the Rebel line that did more or less the same thing. But I got not much more to comment on this piece. So we'll just give it probably a C ranking for that reason. Next we're going to move on to the Trilogy. And this is basically an Elite Triad for the Rebel line. I can't quite mention much else of this piece. So I feel like that it does operate like a Triad and it arguably even feels better than that of the Triad. As grips were supposedly made to be more contouring and therefore more comfortable in a way. So, that gives the Trilogy an A ranking. Next up we have ourselves the Wing Speed, which is also a unique innovation. Why is that? It's simply because its arms can actually fold inward like so. They collapse inward until you're ready to use it. You put an arrow inside, pull it back, the arms come right up, in that unique vertical stance that compound bows are known for and then let go to fire almost like you're using a slingshot so the folding wings is a unique innovation something i'm sure could have been used a little more often but hey at least we have one blaster to account for with this exact type of functionality in mind and so we're just going to leave this 
at an A ranking for that reason. And finally, from the original Rebel line, with plenty of other subsidiaries and sub-themes and whatnot from the series I'll cover later, this actually is a blaster called the Platinum Bow. Yes, it's yet another compound bow that uses darts as ammunition. Unfortunately though, this is a blaster that never truly saw the light of day. With this factory image being the only known form of existence that this blaster has ever truly gotten to the minds of us nerfers. And the reason being was that because the series was discontinued in 2018, the Platinum Bow would be scrapped. Yes, this was a blaster that technically had its own series put together in terms of stages of production, but it never truly made it to the beta stage. You know, it barely even made it out into the marketplace as a whole. The blaster itself with its own unique concept art and its own factory image, that's all we'll ever get. And there were similar blasters that we've had over the years that unfortunately never quite saw the light of day. If you remember my Ultra Tier List video, Tears of the Clown Ultra Tier List, there actually were the likes of the Ultra 6 and Ultra 7. This was basically when Nerf stopped calling these blasters various numbers, for whatever reason. As if naming them after numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and whatnot was a unique idea to begin with, but I was on board with it because it helped the Ultra line stand out from a majority of the blasters in the marketplace. But the Platinum Bow, on the other hand, this is yet another case of a blaster we'll never get to see, ever. But judging from the photo itself that we can pretty much see at this point, I'm just gonna go on ahead and leave it at a ranking of around C tier, only because I'm sure that it could have been a decent blaster if it ever came out at all. And I feel like that with the Rebel line itself, being discontinued has a number of cons to it. And now, what we're gonna do here is move on to the lineup of Super Soaker Rebel Blasters. Yeah, that's right. Between 2013 and 2018, there actually were a small series of Super Soaker related blasters that came out over the years to go alongside the regular Rebel content. One of the first that came out was known as the Blue Crush. This Super Soaker was easy to operate, quite self-explanatory, has design cues that make it similar in a way to others, but you know what? It was a good starting point that came around, so we'll give it a B ranking. For the next one though, I feel like this one is a little unnecessary. The Dolphina Bow. A compound bow super soaker. I already find that to be a strange complexion. Why exactly would you want a compound bow to be put together for the super soaker line? Well then again, why bows in general? There of course was the Tri-Strike Crossbow which came out in 2013 itself, in 2014. But with this though being a more compound bow oriented super soaker, that itself is a bit hard to comprehend. And I can understand the fact that the bow's arms could be used as a means of storing water, and then the handle in the back can actually be used to propulse a jet stream forward. But again, it's hard for me to take in personally, mostly because I never owned the blaster, and a majority of other Rebel blasters I've gotten my hands on were not Super Soaker related either, so, not much more I could say here. This might sound dumb, but a D ranking will pretty much be all that I can offer for this one. And next we're gonna go on to the mini mission. This unfortunately does have its own problems. The cheaply made plastic it uses, which is transparent so you could get a good visual at what the water level was like inside the blaster's chamber. But again, this type of cheap construction is notorious for breaking apart easily. And from what I understand, that's what some people have had to suffer from. Their blaster breaking apart because of how cheaply made it was. And for the fact that it was sold at a lot higher prices. 
compared to what it could have really been priced at knowing it's cheap construction. That itself is a pretty big no-no. So, D ranking for this one. I almost gave it an F ranking, so that's another thing to really consider. Is that sometimes my marks might not hit perfectly, but there's all sorts of things I have in terms of emotional cohesion. So, let's just move on here. We got the Cascade up next. And this poster actually is pretty spot on in terms of its functionality. It utilizes two grips and it has itself a nicely sized water tank. It's also got a pretty color palette. So, self-explanatory enough, we'll give it an A ranking. And next we have the Tri-Threat. Yep, the Tri-Strike crossbow has been ripped off. Not exactly a fun way to do stuff. So, unfortunately, I'm only giving it a C ranking. I would consider this average compared to the likes of the Tri-Strike crossbow because so many blasters have been ripped off over the years. And I feel little to no differentiation. Only in a very few rare amount of cases have I been able to determine other things that were there that actually would have been able to help the likes of such blasters and their rankings I would have given them in a Tears of the Clown episode. So, see a tier with this one. And next up we have the Wave Warrior. This one, unfortunately, does suffer a bit. While it has the unique capabilities of being a blaster that is simple to dip into a bathtub or bucket, pull in, and then squirt forward, it unfortunately has to be quite small. And utilize a big tube, along with a bag. To that I ask, why would that be necessary? Why have all this extra stuff hanging around where it could possibly get in the way of your performance? I mean, I've seen a number of things with dead space and dead weights, but in this case, I feel like this doubles each value. So double the dead weight, double the dead space. Yeah, D ranking for this one. Next up, we have ourselves the Infinity Rush which I also consider to be a bit average. And so this will pretty much just end up in the C tier. Now we have the Secret Soak, which tends to act in a similar way to that of the Secret Strike AS1, hence the name Secret Soak. But it is the only known Super Soaker, apart from a few others that are rad radically small, like the Micro Burst, for instance, which I've talked about before. The Secret Soak is pretty much what it is a C tier ranking for this one just as well. And the final super soaker of the Rebel line is the title twist. Yes, a twisting super soaker. Something I feel like that is rather unique and a bit underrated. So for that reason, we'll just slap this on the B tier for that reason. And much like how it was in the last episode of Tears of the Clown, the Rebel line part two for this occasion, has itself a unique series of mixed arrangements ranging from ranks S, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I feel like that covers this piece, but we're not done yet. Tomorrow on May 3rd, I will have the third and final part for this occasion. There will be a lot of things to come here, so make sure to like, subscribe, comment, Follow me wherever you can find me and stay on the Hollywood side if you'd like to see more.